This Fizzcast will be looking at the electric field from point charges. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. Now that you've read through the question, it should be clear that we have three point charges, three charged particles, in a particular arrangement, that is on the corners of a square. We know something about the sign and size of two of those charges, and we're being asked to calculate the charge that the third of those particles must have so that the electric field at a particular location, that is at the uh, vacant corner of the square, is a zero electric field. So let's begin by quickly interpreting what this question is really involving. This question is involving, as we mentioned, the electric field from a point charge. And there's an important point to remember with electric field, that is that the electric field is a vector. And in this case, we really want to add up some electric fields to give zero at some particular location. So that vector nature of the field is going to be quite important. In the develop stage of our solution, as is often the case, it'll be quite useful to have a diagram or a sketch of the physical situation. So in this case, we can consider four points that are going to make up the square that this problem is based on. And we know that three of those points have a charge on them. And so usefully here, as I've drawn it, we can put this on a set of coordinate axes. And a useful choice here might be to have our coordinate axes aligned along the sides of the square. And in this case, what's really important for us is to consider the electric field at the origin. That's going to be the vacant corner of our square. It's always useful to label things in our problems. So let's call this charge Q1. Let's call this charge Q2. And let's call this charge down here Q3. And as our problem tells us, we know that Q1 and Q3, in our diagram they're the diagonally opposite charges, they have this same charge, which we know is minus 2 microcoulombs. We don't know what charge Q2 is. Indeed, that's what the question is asking us to calculate. What else do we know in this problem? Well, something I left off my diagram here is we know that this is indeed a square. So the distance from the origin of these two charges is the same. Let's just call it D for the time being. In fact, our problem tells us that D is 0 0.15 meters. And as we've already mentioned, we're trying to add up the electric fields to be zero at this location here, at the origin of our coordinates. In this development stage, we can actually start thinking a little bit about what those electric fields will look like. We know the electric field indicates the direction of the force on a positive test charge. So let's think about the electric field at this location from, say, charge Q1. We know that Q1 is a negative charge, so if there was a positive test charge at the origin, it would feel an attractive force towards the negative charge at Q1, so the electric field must point in that direction. Let's call that E1. Similarly for Q3, which we also know is a negative charge, it will be an attractive force for a positive test charge at the origin, so we could draw the electric field from that will point towards that. We could call that E3. And now we know that Q2 here will cause an electric field at the origin. If Q2 was a negative charge, it would cause an electric field to point towards that negative charge. But you should see here that there's no way I could make these three vectors, as I've drawn on there, add up to zero. I can't make them cancel out. They all point essentially up and towards the right. So that tells me immediately, even before I do a calculation, that my diagram helps me determine the electric field from Q2 must point away from Q2. And that tells me immediately that Q2 must be a positive charge. I don't know its magnitude yet, but I do know that this must be something that is positive to give me a zero field from those three charges in total. Let's move on now to the evaluate stage. In the evaluate stage of our solution, we need to remember that we're trying to add up the electric fields to give zero at the origin. And in this problem, uh, we could try to add these three arrows as vectors, but it's much more straightforward, of course, to consider the components of these three vectors. We're dealing here in two dimensions. So we could consider here the x components must all sum to zero, and the y components must all sum to zero. So we could choose whichever one of those we thought was most useful. Let's just begin, for example, by considering the components in the y direction. We can see here that 
E1 is all in the y direction. So if we were going to add up the components in the y direction, we would have to consider all the magnitude of E1. E3, you should be able to see, has no component in the y direction. It points perfectly along the x-axis, therefore it has no component in the y direction. E2 here, you see, has a component in the x-direction, actually in the negative x-direction, and also a component in the y-direction, and once again it's actually in the negative y-direction. And if we think about the line joining this charge to the origin, we can see by the symmetry of our square that this angle in here must in fact be 45 degrees. So if we want to write down the y-component from the field E2, it's going to be a negative, and it's going to be the magnitude E2 multiplied by the sine of 45 degrees. And they're the only components of our field in the y directions, uh, so that must add up to zero. So, how do we write the field from a point charge? We need to remember that the magnitude of the field from a point charge is K, the electric field coefficient, times the charge Q, divided by the square of the distance we are from that charge. So now E1 will be that constant K times Q1, divided by the square of the distance. Now from that charge to the point we're considering here is a distance d, so let's call that d squared. And what about the electric field from charge 2? That's going to be k times q2. And now we want to divide that by the square of the distance. Well we can see in here this is the distance that we're interested in. Let's call that r. So using Pythagoras' theorem we can see that r squared will equal d squared plus d squared, or r squared is 2d squared. So when we divide by the square of the distance, we're going to divide by 2d squared for charge q2. Uh, and sine of 45 degrees, that's one that you might recall, that's actually 1 over root 2 is the sine of 45 degrees, and so they must add up to 0, as we said before. Now we can rearrange this expression here, um, getting the things with Q2, the thing we're trying to calculate on one side, and you can see there's some things that cancel here quite nicely. K cancels there. Um, this D squared here cancels with this D squared. And then when I rearrange this, I simply get that Q2 will equal 2 root 2 times Q1. This expression shows us that we actually don't care what size the square is. The side length of the square, D, actually cancels out of the problem. Uh, so all we really care about here is the fact that we are on a square. The symmetry was important, but the size of the square doesn't matter. And that's one of the reasons why it's nice to do the problem symbolically before we put the numbers in. So now we can include the magnitude of Q1 being 2 microcoulombs, and we can calculate straightforwardly here that this is going to be 5.7 microcoulombs. We should, of course, include an assessment at the end of our problem, just to see if this answer seems to make physical sense to us, so we can easily find if we've made some glaring error along the way in our problem. Q2 turns out to be a larger charge than Q1 and Q3. It's, a, it's the opposite sign, which we determine by looking at our diagram. Does it make sense that it's a larger charge? Well, the field from Q2 has to cancel the fields from Q1 and Q3. So it has to cancel out the field from two charges. So you might expect it maybe to be larger. Also, if you see, Q2 is further away from the origin than Q1 and Q3 are. Again, that tells us that we probably expect Q2 to be larger because we know the electric field decreases like 1 over the distance squared. So we can check there the fact that Q2 is, is larger than Q1 and Q3, and that is exactly what we'd expect it to be.